solving stress transformation problem is very straightforward because you are given equations for determining stresses and you just need to identify the parameters and then plug them into a stress equation. But this is also tricky because identifying the right parameters in order to plug them into the equation is sometimes tricky. I'm going to discuss a question here. Assume that stress element for one point is given as shown in this figure. Stress in the x direction is 192 megapascals positive following the direction of stress, and stress in the y direction is negative 320 megapascals. Negative because stress is going to be compressive in the y direction. There is no shear stress acting on this element, and I want to determine how much would be the normal stress and shear stress on that inclined plane. In order to solve this problem, we need to see how much do we need to rotate this element in order to get to that, that inclined plane. Assume that this is the original element that I have. If I want to rotate the right surface and then get to that inclined plane, which, show, which is making the angle of 50 degrees with the horizontal axis, I need to start from the right surface and I need to get to this plane which is matching with that inclined plane. So in that case, how much should I rotate the element in order to get to that point? As you can see, the angle is not 50 degree, but it is a complement of 50 and that is 40 degree. So the angle of theta that we need to use for this problem would be 40 degree. I used negative sign here. Why did I use negative? If you rotate this element clockwise, that would be negative. This is the sign convention that we have for theta. Now let's see what equation should we use. We have started from the right surface. The right surface is x direction. x is associated with the n axis after rotation. So I'm going to use sigma n equation for this problem. If I plug that, we get sigma n equal to negative 19.6 megapascals. That would be the magnitude of normal stress on that plane. And in the same way, I can determine shear stress. But before doing that, let's talk about the other way to solve this problem. Can I consider another surface to start with instead of the right surface to get to that inclined plane? Let me show that here. This is the stress element that we have, and this is the original element before rotation. Can I consider any other surface to start from? We can consider the bottom surface, and then we can rotate that by 50 degree. And I can rotate that by 50 degree in order to get to that plane. In that case, the theta would be 50 degrees. But can I use sigma n for this problem? Not anymore. Stress in the y direction is associated with sigma t. So I'm going to use sigma t equation for this problem. Sigma x, sigma y, tau xy are going to be the same. Theta is now positive 50 degrees. So I'm going to plug the numbers in. And it is not a surprise that I would get the same magnitude of normal stress on that plane. Sigma t is going to be negative 19.6 megapascals. So in order to solve these types of problems, we need to identify what is the beginning surface and how much do we need to rotate that surface in order to get to that inclined plane? All right, now I'm going to give you the process of solving these types of problems. If we have one stress element and we want to determine how much of stress is on the rotated plane, which is shown by theta here, the first step is determining how much is the angle of theta. And in order to do that, we need to consider one origin plane. That origin plane could be on the left or right, could be on the top or at the bottom. And then we need to determine how much do we need to rotate from the origin plane to the inclined plane in order to get that stress. So based on that, we can determine how much is theta. There are two important notes here. First, there are two correct ways to solve this problem. The other one is make sure that you are using the right sign for theta. If it's clockwise, that's negative. If it's counterclockwise, that's going to be positive. The second step would be picking up the right stress transformation equation. If we start from the right or left surface, sigma n is used for stress transformation. If we have started from the top or bottom, 
we use sigma t for stress transformation. For determining shear stress, there is just one equation, so it doesn't matter which surface we start from, that we just identify the right theta in order to get the magnitude of normal and shear stresses. Now let's practice a problem here. Look at these types of problems. I want us to talk about what is the theta and what is sigma n for solving these problems. Let's focus on the left element. Stress in the x direction is negative 215. Stress in the y direction is positive 135. What about the shear stress? Positive or negative? Positive on the right surface, it goes upward, so that would be positive 285. All right, I want to determine how much is the normal stress and shear stress on that inclined plane. The first option, would be considering the right surface and then rotating that to get to that inclined plane, like this. If that's the case, I need to rotate it 75 degrees counterclockwise in order to get to that inclined plane. And I would just use sigma n, and if I plug the numbers, that would be 254 megapascals, and shear stress would be negative 150 Nine. For option two, we can start from the another surface. If we start from the bottom surface, we need to rotate the element by 15 degrees clockwise in order to get to that plane. And because we have started from the bottom surface, we are going to use sigma t. 